do it, okay. Oh, good. Was right. Thank you. Well. Oh, good. That's Thank good you. to hear. Pleasure. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. Okay. <coughs> Pat Johnson. Alex. Hi, Roy. Uh, Alex. Uh, apart from the results of Hayes, I'm particularly disappointed to see Joe getting two goals in set pieces. Yeah. I mean, they were good set pieces, of course, but uh, if you speak to our players, they, they're a little bit aggrieved. You know, they, they thought that there were infringements for both the goals, but we didn't, they weren't lucky enough to have those infringements recognised by the referee, so we find ourselves two goals to kneel down. And then, to compound things, of course, we really give them the, the game which really puts, the, the goal that really puts the game to bed from one of our set pieces, you know, from one of our corner kicks. Corner kick wasn't wasn't long enough, and uh, from the ball back in straight into the goalkeeper's arms, and a quick counter attack, and suddenly we're three goals to nil down. And that probably effectively any hope we might have had of getting back into the game. The real disappointment then is the last two goals, but I must take responsibility for that because players players were tiring. Obviously, we went needed we thought some fresh legs. The fresh legs are the young lads, and it was too much to ask for them to go on and and deal with a rampant Arsenal, and as a result, we lose the game heavily. No support the right to the game 5 0. This is the second time in, in a week that fans have shown some discontent when they sh uh, took a ban off uh, today during the match. Just wondering what you've made of, this, of that message and, and how the fans feel this week. Well, I don't, I don't deal with the fans <laughs> during the course of the week, only on match days. Um, I think the one on Wednesday was was understandable because they didn't or wouldn't have been able to understand why we took Ezzy off the field. You know, they just thought I was probably making a strange decision to take Ezzy off the field and not somebody else. But we had our reasons for that, which I've explained in some detail. And no doubt that message has got across. Today it's a different type of message. It's it's quite a, a detailed one. It's it's aimed at probably everybody in the club. It, it, it seemed. Uh, all I can say is I think they're totally entitled to their opinion in that respect. I do understand their frustration, even anger and disappointment that things haven't gone better. We can make our excuses, which we've been doing, because certain things have worked against us during this period of time. But the bottom line is that if we're going to go forward and avoid relegation and, 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 and do well, we need those fans with us. And Hopefully, we can do our best to keep them on board, and we can only do that by winning four matches and playing better than we than we did today. Hello, Roy. You've, you've, Hi, been, Sam. you've been in a concentration for four, and you must have every confidence that you, you start to experience and work your way out of it. Yeah, I think so, Sam. I, I, I believe in the team. I mean, the fact is, at the moment, we are. We are stretched, to, 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 to say the least, and furthermore, our attacking threat, you know, when you lose Elise and IU at the same time, is, is obviously blunted, and that will change when those two players come back. I don't think that in the last game, despite the fact we've not won them, we've been outplayed that often. Um, we've been in games, even against the, even against the Liverpools and the Chelsea's and and the Brightons and the, and the Arsenals. Today we were outplayed, in particular towards the end of the game, but up to that period, I, I thought that the players stuck at their task. I thought they showed that they're still committed and they, they're still wanting to do well for the club. Uh, but of course the result decides everything. At 3-0 it wouldn't have been quite so bad. It was those last two goals that really uh, bring about the the doom and gloom situation, if you like, because 5-0 is a very bad defeat at any level. Roy, as you kind of pointed to there, it wasn't long ago you were getting that great point at Man City and then you beat your bench. So is it just the way things are in the modern world that patience is quite sort of short and only hmm. you know, a couple of weeks later you're facing fans like, like this? Yeah. I think it is part it's part and parcel of football. I think it probably always has been. I mean, obviously, these days where staying in the Premier League is so important and relegation is such a fear for everybody. Uh, the uh, That type of situation might come around a bit quicker than it may have done many years ago. But I've been working in 
these modern times for a long time as well. Since I came back to England in 2008, nothing's changed since then. Uh, the fact is, when a team isn't doing as well as it should be doing, someone needs to be held responsible, and that's always the manager. <coughs> I was waiting for the player, waiting for the players to come on. That was all, just to wait for it, you know. Oh, I see. So you've got some, uh, you've got some theory there. You, uh, I see. No, actually, I, I, I very rarely dash straight down the tunnel uh, at the end of games. Half time sometimes, but in the game. So if you if you watch me carefully, you could probably find that I stand quite often uh, at the end of games. Well, the message has got to be that, first of all, they've got to stick very much with the work that they have been doing on the training field and, and, and continue to do. They've got to make certain that they, they stick together in terms of their attitude. Because, to be honest, I didn't think the attitude during the course of the game was particularly debatable. I didn't see people losing hope or losing faith. We, we kept going. We were playing against a better team. That was the problem. You know, they're, they're so so talented and it's so difficult to get the ball from them and to great goal chances that you find yourself under that pressure for long periods. But I thought that I thought we kept going. I'm not prepared myself, pardon me, to allow that last 10 or 15 minutes where they scored those two goals to totally um, blind my... Or, or, or change my opinion of what I thought the team tried to do and, and, and kept trying to do during the bulk of the game. At 3-0, I'd have probably been here and saying, well, you know, we, we lost to a better team and, and they're all talking about this, the set plays. At 5-0, it just gives the impression that you've been totally and utterly battered from start to finish. But um, I didn't think that was the case personally. But no, the message has got to be, listen, you know, there's, there's no... Magic wands in football. There's nothing that can be said. It's all very well having press conferences and saying and answering questions, but it's got to be done on the field of play. And that starts on the training field and then it's brought onto the field of play. And I think we've shown over the last year that we do have capabilities in that respect. And I'm not prepared to suddenly dismiss any of those capabilities on the basis of losing one nil up at, at uh, Everton to a wonder free kick and, and losing to the Arsenal Football Club away from home today. Well, that's a question for them, isn't it? You know, but I'm a, if you're asking me, have I ever felt that there is a lack of support from those? The answer is no, I haven't. I think they've been good. But I mean now, in the situation that you're obviously discussing or the, the scenario that you're obviously envisaging, that's got to be a question for them. OK. Thanks very much, everyone. OK.